Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. Officials at the Red River Zoo are asking for your help finding their missing red panda. They say at about 8.15 this morning, during a routine inspection, one of the zookeepers discovered that a male red panda, Sheffield, was not in his holding facility. So far, the search for Sheffield has turned up nothing. Let's go live to Valley News Team's Joshua Figueroa, who's at the Red River Zoo, with more on the search efforts for this red panda. Joshua? Andrew, I'm standing right in front of the red panda or the Chinese red panda exhibit right here at the Red River Valley Zoo. Now, I spoke with the Red River Zoo. I spoke with uh, Sally Jacobson, the executive director. What she says was that the pan they believe the panda is in the zoo, zoo the 90 percent sure it's in the zoo, and it's somewhere hidden among the trees. They don't know where they're hoping that by the end of the night, the panda will come down. Um, they say if it's not in the zoo and you happen to find it, call the zoo. They believe it, it won't harm anyone. It's a harmless panda. It's about the size of a raccoon. If, if you look behind me, you, there's one right here. As you can see, that that's Pepper. Pepper didn't leave the enclosure, but but also what they told us was that the zoo um, at, at the zoo was that the panda was in a breeding area. They were looking for it to mate uh, with another panda, but we're going to send it right back to you in the studio uh, as we look to find more information on this. Reporting live in Fargo, Joshua Pergero, Valley News Live. All right. Thanks, Joshua. Be sure to stick with Valley News Live for updates on Sheffield's whereabouts. Today is our day to dry out because more rain is on the way. Let's find out if we should expect anything this evening. Here's Justin with your no wait weather. Justin. And thank you, Andrea. Good evening, everybody. We have a cool, breezy, but calm uh, night ahead. Temperatures falling back uh, from the lower 60s into the 50s going through this evening. Uh, temperature is a little cool for this time of year. Sunset around 857. And then uh, areas of frost possible overnight up north. We're going to see partly to mostly cloudy skies as temperatures fall back from the 50s into the 40s, some places into the 30s for lows. Current temperatures around the region into the upper 50s up north and some lower 60s especially into lakes country we can't get rid of the breezy northerly winds of 10 to 30 or 10 to 30 miles per hour and it's pumping in cool air some sunshine especially across our far northern counties and now getting into lakes country everybody else partly cloudy it's going to be a dry and calm evening tonight but there is rain on the way for the end of uh, Friday and through the weekend as temperatures stay cool. Well, the details later in the newscast. All right. Thanks, Justin. We now know the cause of a fire that nearly destroyed a home in the Northern Valley. An official with the Marshall County Sheriff's Department tells us lightning was the culprit that caused the fire at a home in Argyle last night. Firefighters were there well into the night watching for hot spots. That investigation is ongoing. A 22-year-old man is now facing charges of attempted murder, assault with a deadly weapon, and reckless discharge. Police say 22-year-old Chase Gagnon is in jail after firing 11 rounds from a pistol along Main Street Sunday night. They say he shot in random directions, but there's no clear motive for the shooting. Bullet fragments were collected after going through a window of a bank in town. No one was hurt. Police believe Gagnon was under the influence of an illegal substance at the time of the incident. A West Fargo couple affected by Tuesday's power outage reached out to our whistleblower hotline after they say they weren't allowed to stay at a local hotel. The couple says hotel staff told them they usually don't allow locals to spend the night due to drug problems in the metro. Valley News Live's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley talked with a woman and a hotel staff today who say the policy is in place to keep guests and workers safe. When the power was still out for Jody and her husband Tuesday night, they decided it would be best to stay at a hotel, calling Expressway Suites on 17th Avenue. But Jody says that plan quickly went south when she called the front desk. She said, oh, you're a local? Well, we don't usually sell rooms to local people. Jody says the staff member told her it was because of the drug problem in the valley. We're not drug dealers. We're 61 and 65 years old. We're senior citizens. We need a room for the night because we don't have any power in our house. But the hotel didn't budge, forcing the couple to find refuge somewhere else. 
they welcomed us with open arms. We told them our story and, and they said they've never heard of that before. I talked with Expressway Suites' manager today and while he didn't want to go on camera, he says the policy only comes into play for last minute reservations, saying that's usually when the riffraff tries to get in. Maybe they're going to start doing background checks. I don't know. The manager also says the policy is on a case by case basis and that his staff tries to verify the reason local guests are making those late reservations. I don't think I should even have had to explain to her why I'm getting a room. The manager added by the time he saw that Jody's power outage story was true, it was too late. I shouldn't have to tell somebody checking into a hotel that I'm not dealing drugs. I talked with eight other hotels in the area today who say while they understand where the policy is coming from, none of them have anything like it. In Fargo, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Fargo police looked at their records and say there are only two incidents related to the drugs at the Expressway Suites, saying the last time police were at the hotel for drug activity was February 2018. But police say that doesn't mean drug activity hasn't happened there since then. If you need help uncovering fraud or corruption in your community, call our whistleblower hotline and we'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. Call 237-6576 and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. Grand Forks police have now doubled the reward after a hit and run crash in the Northern Valley killed a woman. The reward is $5,000 for any information leading to the person who uh, hit and killed the 39 year old. Police believe the crash happened between 4.45 and 5 a.m. on April 7th in the area of Interstate 29 and Demers Avenue. Christina Melvin was pronounced dead while being taken to a hospital. Authorities say Melvin was passing through Grand Forks on an Amtrak train when the incident happened. Anyone with information is encouraged to call Grand Forks Police at 787-8004. One woman is recovering from minor injuries after she was run over by a bobcat loader in Grand Forks. Rescue crews were called to 20th Street North and 5th Avenue around 10.30 this morning for a medical emergency. Authorities tell us the woman had injuries to her lower body but is expected to be okay. Police say there's no sign of foul play in this incident. This weekend, traffic might be moving a little slower than usual in Moorhead. More construction work will take place from 8 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. starting this Sunday and is expected to last through Wednesday, May 22nd. I-94, Highway 10 and Highway 75 will be impacted during that time. The bridge over the Red River on I-94 is also having some work done on it. That work is expected to last until 5 a.m. on Thursday, May 23rd. The Cass County Sheriff's Office is moving forward with a statewide anonymous texting platform, platforms rather, designed to make schools safer and allow drug crimes to be reported. They're called Project Stand Up for School Safety and Project Stand Up to Drug Crime. They allow people to anonymously report suspicious behavior, threats and violence in every school by texting SAFE to 82257. Those tips are delivered to law enforcement instantly. Tips involving student issues like suicide, shootings, bullying, and vandalism can be reported immediately. Students and the community can also report illegal drug activity by texting DRUGS to 82257. And here's a heads up for anyone living in Valley City. Over the next few days, you may notice that your water pressure is off and your water is discolored. The Public Works Department will soon be flushing hydrants in Valley City. They say the water is still safe to drink while they're flushing, but they do encourage you to check your water before doing laundry and store water for drinking and cooking. Later on Valley News Live at 6, it happens more than you think. People using the swimming pool as a bathtub. And high temperatures today only into the lower 60s. We should be near 70 this time of year. Unfortunately, temperatures going in the wrong direction for the weekend with a lot of rain. Well, the details next.